So this time, let's add some simple sliding back and forth platforms to create like, you know, the, the type of platforms you'd see in a, a platforming game. Um, all right, let's get started. So in our blueprints folder, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new blueprint actor, which I'll call sliding peas. I'm just gonna go BP and open that up. Once that's open, we're gonna want to create I'm just going to put a cube down for now. Um, again, like with all this game, it's up to you to sort of beautify it and make it look pretty. I'm just going to show you how we can create some stuff. All right, so this will be my platform. Is it a good size? I want to go a touch bigger, actually. Maybe 2.5. Let's try that. Um, and ultimately we'll probably have like a row of these. So I'll probably do two, but for now I'm just gonna test it with one. And what we're gonna do on event begin play is we're going to create ourselves a timeline. So I'll we'll just call this one first, because we're gonna like I say we're gonna have two platforms. Um, if we double click it, it'll allow us to edit it. And we're just gonna create a float, which I'm not gonna name. And every time we put press shift and left click we'll create one of these points. Um, now, we're just gonna keep it simple for now and put two points in, maybe at one and one. So now we've just got a simple one, one graph. And now we want to set what we're going to move. So I'm gonna get reference to my cube and I'm gonna say, hey, you, cube, add yourself some world offset. And from the update, so it's going to play this animation and whatever info we get from this, we are going to feed into our location. Um, so I'm just going to split this because we only actually want to do it on the Y. So I could take this and play you. And what I should do is it'll play the block. So let's have a quick look just to make sure it does. So I'm just going to go to simulate. Cool, we can see it plays. Um, let me raise it up a bit as well. And actually it played for longer than I want it to because I need to go back to my timeline and say use last keyframe. Um, cool. Okay, so we're also gonna want it to come back on itself. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create ourselves a new float. Um, and we can do that by clicking promote to variable or we can go to our variable section and create one called reverse, which we'll just set to a float. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna times our float by reverse. And we're gonna give reverse a default value of one because our forward value times one is the exact same number. But when we reach our destination, what we're going to do is we're going to um, set reverse to minus one. And once we set reverse to minus one, we're going to play this animation again. And we're going to just do so by creating a custom event, um, which we'll call animate. And you can play from start. Cool. So once this is done, we're going to play animate. And that'll do. Apart from now it's only going to go back and forth. So we're just going to add one more node just to really get this working, which is gonna be a flip-flop, which kind of does, as it says, it alternates between A and B. So once it's done this, um, I fire this event next time, it'll fire this one. Just make sure you set this back to hole one. And let's see how that looks. Okay, it's good. Not much sort of distance or value between them. So that's where we edit it in our timeline. So with our timeline, you know what? Maybe I'll do it actually over two seconds, but we'll have a value of, I don't know, four this time. Um, and I'm actually gonna grab both points and right click and set them to auto, which is gonna give me this nice curve. So this is definitely something you can mess with to get like sort of different effects. Um, like if you wanted to sort of like fast in and slow out, for example. 
So you see how it's sort of like slowed out and then sort of shut up. It's a bit, it's a bit not very nice, but you know, we'll just put that back to regular auto. And in fact, you know what? Let's actually set this to two because instead it might be easier to control here. So before we reverse it, let's just do another float times float. So this will actually handle the distance. Um, and let's promote this to variable again, called distance, which will give it a default value of, I don't know, two. I'm actually gonna open that variable up as well, make it a public variable so we can edit it if we need to. And let's just see how that looks. Okay, a lot better. It's still quite sharp towards the end. Um, but you know, you can, like I say, you can tweak this even more to give it like a different range, maybe make the curve a bit sort of smoother. Add some more like points in. So it's a bit more like that. And let's just auto it again. So that should hopefully be a little bit smoother. It's not really that much smoother. Anyway, I'm not gonna to worry too much about that for now. We're just going to go ahead and just work with that. Um, Cause you can be fine tuning these things for forever. So now we've got this cube and it's nice. And it's one. Uh, I'm going to duplicate it. Oops. And I'm going to move it next to it. And this one, we're kind of going to do the same thing again. So I don't actually need you guys. Let's get rid of you. And essentially, just like, essentially, kind of just like duplicate all of this. But um, I'm going to have this one go left, whereas this one went right. So um, it'll be slightly different. So just overlap at some point. Um, and I'm just going to cut here and do that. Okay, so as you can see here, I've basically just duplicated. I had to change, I've changed a few things. So I renamed my custom event to anim2 because you can't have two of the same custom events. So I've changed those, changed my reverse to reverse2 um, and set my thing for cube2 there. So essentially it's just all duplicated, but everything I've set to two. I've kept distance the same because they can both use the same variable. And I'm just going to wide them up now using a sequence. And what this will do is it'll basically fire both at the same time. Oh, also, no, sorry, I did, um, you can, you've also got to have two timelines. So I've also got the second timeline, which is just an invert of this timeline. Whereas this timeline goes up, this timeline is the inverse of that. So this goes up, this one goes down, up, down, up, down. We get the gist. Um, all right, let's see how it looks. There we go. That should provide us a nice little challenge. Um, so waiting for these two Actually, they're a bit small. <laughs> I might have to scale them up um, and then I can sequence a few, put them, put them in place one after the other, and that should be good, which um, is awesome. All right, thanks for watching.